talk about the thermal management system for the Ford Focus Electric. This is basically the system to manage the heat or to, or to heat um, the components that make up the electric vehicle. This uh, system was designed um, by Magna International um, for use by Ford. So I got the, I, this schematic comes from Ford and then the information um, I gleaned off of uh, reading the patent that Magna submitted. So basically what we have here is we have three loops. We have uh, here in blue, the blue is the MECS loop, the motor electronics cooling system loop. Here in green is the battery coolant loop. And then here in red is the uh, cabin uh, heating loop. Doesn't really show the cooling loop uh, here in the cabin on this schematic. Um, this is really mostly for um, heating or cooling. Let me see, provide cooling the motor and electronics, heating the cabin, or cooling and or heating the battery. So basically what we have is three loops that can operate independently or together. We have one single uh, expansion tank that feeds off. So really if we start kind of very simply, we have a a motor cooling loop down here. We have three valves. There's one, two, and there's a third valve buried down underneath there. And there's a three pumps as well. So let's talk about let's talk about the coolant coming in here from the radiator. So it comes in from the radiator into a pump into the DC to DC converter over to the traction motor and back out and then into one valve and then a second valve and then either back to the radiator or the second valve does a bypass. So if we looked at that, so coming in from the radiator, there's an, there's an outlet down there where you see the number 27. So that's the, that's the radiator uh, input. Let's see, no, that's the radiator output. So that's the, that's the cool, cool flow coming out. It goes immediately to a pump down there. And from that pump, it connects into these lines. So coming out here, let me see, coming out here, it's joined by the degas bottle and the bypass valve comes into a pump. And that's the pump down there that we really can't see at the moment. Then it pumps into, or up into this piece right here. So that's, there's a pump down there and it pumps fluid up into this hose into the DC to DC inverter out of the DC and DC inverter and into the traction motor then it comes out of the traction motor way down there and it comes up from the traction motor into this whole mess to what's called a cabin heat valve which is essentially this piece down there. So there's a cabin heat valve way down there. So the fluid comes out of that traction motor, makes a turn, goes into that heat valve, comes out of that heat valve into this next valve. So that's this line right here is this line right there. So this is the bypass valve right here. In normal mode, this is with the green stripe. So in normal mode, it'll send the fluid to the radiator, which is what you see right here, this line right here. Or alternatively, it'll switch over and it'll bypass the radiator. So it'll send it down in here and this is the bypass line right here. So this section with this turn that goes back over there, that's the bypass line. So the bypass line comes down over here. Also, if you see, if you see over here, the bypass line's coming down. It's also, it's, it's joined by the radiator output that I showed you. It's also joined by a bypass line from the battery cooling system. And that's basically what you see here. So this, this hose here is coming from the battery, goes into this valve, and then it, it circulates back down to the chiller and then from the chiller it comes out, 
runs underneath the motor mount and back out to the battery again. Or, if this valve closes, it'll run to the bypass line. That's what you see here. You'll see the, the coolant flow for the battery coming out of the chiller, going through the battery packs into the BCCM, gets a temperature control. On its way to the valve, it's met by a line from the degas tank, which is what you see right here. So this fluid flows is flowing back to the degas tank, so it ends up coming up right up here. So that's the fluid out. This goes into this valve and bypasses. So those are the systems that you can see um, here. I color coded them a little bit so you can kind of see. Um, the, this is the main path and then that's the alternate path. Here is the main path and that's the alternate path. So you, I don't, and then over here for the heater, that's pretty simple. There's an in on the left and an out on the right. And so that's, there's not too complicated that there. Um, the heater system isn't terribly complicated. The only thing that's a little bit maybe tricky on the heater system is sometimes it goes into a loop and sometimes it lets the fluid divert into this bypass line. And you'll kind of see that here. You'll see this heater line here come into a bypass line. If they didn't want that to bypass, there's a motor down there that just closes off and turns into a loop. So that's how the cooling system works. Um, there's several modes. There's a, there's a priority logic for the cooling system. So the priority logic is the most important thing is to control the battery circuit temp. The second most important thing is to control the motor circuit temp. Third most important thing is to control the cabin temp, and the fourth thing is to keep performance in maximum range. We do have a couple heating modes. We have a cabin heating mode. Um, the first condition is warm fluid from the motor electronic system out reroutes to the cabin heater core inlet. The outlet from the heater core routes to the MCS bypass. That's the first mode. Um, the heater pumps at slow speed to avoid coolant flow through the bypass. The second heating condition is the valve closes and which has a recirculation. So this valve can close here. Um, that valve closes there and it, may, and it forces a recirculation. Then you have several cooling for the situations for the battery. You basically have, um, it, it's kind of complicated, but the battery can either um, exchange coolant, take the coolant from the motor electronic cooling system, or can close off, here at this valve right here, can close off, and it can circulate through the chiller. Or it could open, chiller will still run, and it'll circulate fluid back through the motor system and through the radiator core, radiator, and then come back. So those are the three modes that the battery cooling system has. So uh, hopefully I don't rush through it too quick. Um, hopefully that helps somebody. Thanks.